Hi, welcome to Studio Stillwater. I'm Michelle Charles. And I am Chris Peters. And today we're here with Carly Santelli, candidate for Stillwater Board of Education. Ward 1. Yes. Hello. Everybody gets the vote. Everybody gets to vote. It is a citywide election, although the candidates represent a certain area. How, how does that work, Carly? What area of town do you live in? I live pretty close to Couch Park, actually. Um, like It's a 20-minute walk nice. to Couch Park. It's really nice. On a nice day, we've bike ride to there and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, just almost like country living, but still inside city limits, so... Kind of Ooh. the best of both worlds. <laughs> that sounds really nice. It does. So, it, so basically, Ward 1 is more on the east side of town? Southeast, yes. Okay. Okay, yeah. very good. And what school do your kids attend? My son attends Highland Park, and my daughter is not quite old enough to attend, so <laughs> she's nice. not in one yet. Very okay. Cool. Well, we always start with a really basic question, which is, what brought you to Stillwater? Um, short answer is my parents. <laughs> I was actually born here in the hospital, just right up the street. Um, went to Stillwater my entire life, pre-K at Will Rogers, because they didn't have it at all the schools at the time, mm-hmm. and then Richmond, and then I went through middle school, junior high, and high school here, and met my husband when we were both in eighth grade. At the junior high here. Oh, wow. I had a huge crush on his best friends. <laughs> Isn't that how it always works? Right? Sometimes and, it does, yeah. yeah. And we ended up just falling in love like a decade later. So <laughs> we have two kids now. Very good. Now, So he grew up in Stillwater as well. Yes. He was actually born in Midwest City, but he went to school here too. Okay. So is most of your family still around here? Yes. Yes, the furthest way that my mom's side has gotten has been Cushing and Oklahoma City. But otherwise, we're all in Oklahoma. Okay, so we can we can establish that you know the town well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Let me think here. So what kinds of stuff did you do when you were going to school in Stillwater? What kind of activities were you involved in? Uh, in school, I was in art club. I was in acting classes. I did... Kind of a little bit of everything. I was kind of like not really a popular kid, but I also wasn't like an outcast. I always at the time thought I was like I didn't really think I had that many friends. But after getting out, I've realized maybe I really wasn't the outcast. I was just more accepting of everyone. Yeah, Um, I did. Back then we had a club called SWAT. That was students against working against tobacco companies and we were in that um, oh. like i was... think i had a friend uh I, I grew up in west virginia that high school age and uh they were really going against a uh, craft like hmm. craft macaroni and cheese because craft really? is owned by the same company like parent company is one of the big tobacco companies or oh something really like that. yeah i, so did not know I that. remember saying going around saying you got a boycott uh <laughs> Cancel uh, Kraft Macaroni and Cheese. Oh, wow. That's probably tough to do. That's a tough sell. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how well that worked. I I don't think it worked very well. (laughs) Not around here anyway. No. Now, my daughter was in SWAT. I had one of my my youngest uh, daughters was in SWAT. And a lot of their activities were going around uh, the parks and picking up cigarette butts. And then taking pictures with, you know. Oh, man. And with all the big bags of cigarette butts, because there are a very large number of them, and people don't realize that they're not biodegradable. Yeah, yeah. they just sit there forever. Those filters are not. Yeah. Actually, thinking back on it, we, my group at one point went to Couch Park and we cleaned up around the pool. Oh wow! It was pretty bad, actually. Like, Probably all along the fence line. Oh yeah. yeah, fence line and right outside the gate and everything. It was eye opening. So, so what made you like want to be a part of? of that group instead of you know a different club or something part of me is my best friend um the other part was my parents smoked pretty heavily up until right before i turned 18 actually Mm -hmm. (laughs) and that just i remembered when i was like 11 walked into our living room i saw this cloud of smoke like i could see the layer and i'm just like i'm never touching a cigarette and so that's Okay. One of my accomplishments. I actually have never 
smoked. So wow, and that's also why I decided to join. Okay, did you know, your it's, parents stop? They did shortly from, because uh, of like your. I don't like, know if it was because of, but they on their. 19th wedding anniversary they went to one of the hypnosis stop smoking things and Ooh. and it worked this and it seemed to work because a couple weeks later i was in a car wreck and my mom passed oh, no. every gas station i can get cigarettes there i can get cigarettes there i can get cigarettes there oh, and yeah. she didn't stop so and that was like the most stressful thing she could have gone through at the time like wow. two weeks later Good job, mom. Right? <laughs> I mean, it, it is hard for people. It is yeah. really, really hard for and people. And they're still smoke free. That is wonderful. Yeah. That is. I'm really, really proud of them for that. So, I that's a big accomplishment. Yeah, it is. Uh, my husband recently quit dipping, mm. which he'd been doing since he was 13. Oh wow! Yes, I mean because they start that young, either like playing baseball or fishing or hanging out behind the back fence with their friends. <laughs> mm-hmm. In high school, uh, we had just moved into the neighborhood, and um, I had moved in right next to a, a house with another kid uh, my age in high school, and we're hanging out on the front porch. And he brings out this bag of a uh, long cut, and he's <laughs> like, "You know, here you want some." And I mean, in West Virginia, I'm sure it was somewhere to hear like every, everybody smoked or dipped or something, um, men and women there. <laughs> and uh, I, I was like, sure. And I put it in my mouth and it was so acidic and like burning. And I was like, oh, no. Yeah. There I just go. couldn't stand the secondhand smoke. So that's why I decided yeah. I wasn't going to make it. So you were involved in SWAT and uh, you've stayed here in Stillwater. Mm-hmm. So you're you're married. You've got a couple kids. Mm-hmm. What was your what was your upbringing like here in Stillwater? What what other kinds what kinds of things did your family do? We were very outdoorsy. We gardened, like vegetable garden, flower garden. We would always go hunting for deer, primarily fishing every summer. Um, camping every almost every chance we got like we were pretty outdoorsy we didn't really get too much into the hiking I think my parents just didn't want to deal with three kids whining that their feet hurt so (laughs) (laughs) I don't blame them (laughs) but otherwise yeah we were pretty outdoorsy just kind of did a little bit of everything I'm assuming maybe you still do that with your family we're starting to get more into it my youngest just turned three so we've kind of laid back Mm. a little bit because I really don't want to deal with it that kind of stuff with a toddler oh yeah not fun but we've did our first camp out with her this past fall and she did phenomenal so i think we're gonna start trying to pick that up again where were some of your favorite places to go like here in oklahoma (sighs) here in stillwater i'm always a sucker for blackwell and mcmurtry Mm -hmm. um Beyond that, Keystone is a favorite. Okay, so growing up as kind of an outdoorsy kid in Stillwater, going all the way through the school system, uh, how do you think that formed who you are as a person? That is a really good question. I know I just, I care about nature. I make sure that, like, we were cleaning up our garden the other day, and I found a little... uh, rough earth snake and I made sure to protect him because my parents were coming to till up my garden for me and I didn't want him to get harmed Mm -hmm. so I kept him nice and safe and let him come back into my garden I just because they're 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 good for that right they're very good keep out other things he's just a little like foot long snake so he was he just eats worms and grubs and the things that would kill your plants there you go I just I don't know really because I just, I haven't been anywhere else, so I haven't really had a chance to see if Stillwater itself is what made me me, or if I'm just me because I'm me. (laughs) I just, I'm pretty open and Like, it's both. You're you're definitely a product of Stillwater and of the community. Yeah, if you've not really lived anywhere else, then you may not really be able to compare. Yeah. Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I like that. So... Having spent your whole life here, um, I mean, what do you love about it? What What is it that's made you stay? Mostly family. Beyond that, I just, I love the friendliness. It's, everything I know is here. 
I've been in my son's school. The teachers have all been phenomenal. My teachers from when I was in school have been phenomenal. They've kept me kind of grounded. They helped me kind of maybe shape who I am also. Yeah. So are you involved in uh, PTA and things like that? Are you able to? My daughter was born when my son was in kindergarten. So I didn't join PTA then. (laughs) That's understandable. Yeah. (laughs) You're a little busy. A little bit. Yeah. She's just now starting to get a lot more independent. So I haven't really being perfectly honest been in PTA I haven't really followed the meetings I've on my school's PTA Facebook page but I haven't made it to any of the meetings because children especially mm-hmm. little ones but okay. I, I need to start getting more active and I intend to do that well that leads me to another question okay. then how easy is it for people like you because there are a lot of people in your situation to really stay up on what's going on with their kids and with the schools. With social media and everything, it has actually been easier, I think, than maybe how it was 10, 20 years ago. Um, Because you can actually just follow their Facebook pages, assuming each school has one, and or even just the Facebook page of Stillwater Public Schools. I can text my son's teacher right now if I wanted to and say, hey, is there anything he needs to work on? And she's been amazing, as have his IEP teachers and all of it. It's just, I'd say it's pretty easy, to be perfectly honest. So modern communication. There's no longer the uh, teacher writing a a note home. (laughs) Give this to your parents. And they're like, yeah, no, I'm not going to give that to my parents. Exactly. exactly, (laughs) Because my son had been kind of goofing off in some of his Zoom meetings and his on a couple of his assignments and his teacher would just send me a text. Hey, Tony did this in his assignment. I'm sending it back. So I knew what he needed Mm -hmm. to actually work on. Yeah. Kids don't know now. They they used to have uh, an advantage being the, the the messenger. (laughs) Well, and also they had maybe almost a whole week because the parents had to wait till the Thursday folder came out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, And I know they still have that, but I think COVID has kind of made that a, a little harder. Yeah. So uh, people aren't exchanging pieces of paper as freely as we used to. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, Accurate. you can actually go attend a school board meeting or right. you know, virtually. You can at least yeah. watch, which I remember the first time I watched them, I was used to watching city council once. You know, they've got their agenda and it's you know, maybe there's some lengthy presentations, but some of the pre COVID ones, um, I can't say I watched too many before covid obviously that suddenly all turned our attention to like oh we need to we need to pay attention to this we need to figure out what they're deciding and the the meetings are just so much like longer and like approve this budget approve this budget and then and they always bury the what everybody is really there for you know like the (laughs) the talking about either the, the next mass stuff or whatever where I'm like, okay, just do everybody a favor and just put that, bump that up early on the agenda so we can just get it over with. And then you can go, you know, approve <laughs> the construction budget for, you know, the middle school gymnasium or whatever. But then you don't know what's going on for everything else. I guess. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, I see it's double edged sword. I see both sides. It's so. like yeah. the grocery store putting the milk in the back of the store. Mm-hmm. So you have to walk past everything else to get to it. Yep. That's what it is. Yes. Yep. It's to make all people stay chips, through the whole meeting. All the snacks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> I think that I wonder if they really have thought about it that way. That's that's perfect. I I know at the city council meetings they will like say you have you know fifteen people wearing matching t-shirts from the Westwood Neighborhood Association or any other group. I always think of Westwood because they were so effective and they in, had in organizing and they did have t-shirts. Uh, I always tell the anyone on city or anyone who wants to uh, have an impact on city council or an issue in the city get matching t-shirts and (laughs) all start going to city council meetings and sitting together and all of a sudden you're a movement but anyway yeah i mean it's amazing how effective it is but anyway what the city council will do is when they have one of those movements in the audience they will go ahead and take whatever that business item is and move it up and get it out of the way so that those folks don't have to sit through an hour and a half of presentations to talk about what they want to talk about yeah well because the the public discussion portion is always like at the same like after the what consent docket or whatever right and so if you're going to have 10 people up there talking about something 
And then that's not like the next subject that they're going to talk about. Like you might as well just kind of do it all together. Sure. In, yeah. In the same. Right. Connect <laughs> the the two conversations. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, long story short, school board doesn't necessarily do that. A lot of times you do have to sit through quite a bit of other business in order to hear the thing that might be more controversial that we know a lot of people are, are tuning in for. Yeah. So. I mean, talk to me, you've talked about your love of nature and, you know, your your family and everything, but what, I mean, what types of things are important to you as a person? Uh, my children, for one, obviously. Um, I just want what's best for them. Uh, beyond that, I just, I want what's best for the most amount of people. Get everyone on a level playing field, just treat everyone equally just i'm i'm just a pretty much if you don't do bad you're okay in my book even if we don't necessarily agree mm -hmm. so so do you feel like the playing field isn't necessarily level and not entirely i it is starting to get better but it's taking maybe longer than i would expect not necessarily through the schools, but in just in general, life in general. How do all of these things that we've talked about, how do they lead you to wanting to serve on the school board? Uh, my biggest thing on that is that I feel that we need a better representation of parents and guardians who have kids who are act actually enrolled in Stillwater schools at this time, whether it was pre-COVID or during COVID or hopefully soon post-COVID. Mm -hmm. I think we need to know what the parents are feeling going through that have to deal with the plans that the school board puts in place. That's my biggest concern is maybe they see, oh, okay, let's, let's do this. This sounds reasonable, but maybe it's not for five-year-olds in kindergarten so so how do you so obviously you would be putting on that hat of i'm a parent with young kids in the school system that plans on you know being in the school system for another you know 15 years or longer <laughs> um so how do you think being on the school board you would help represent other parents besides just being one yourself I kind of pride myself on being an open ear, listening to all sides, and then making a decision based on the facts at hand, both sides of the aisle, just everything, get all the information I can, and then present my opinion, my vote, whatever, based on what I think will benefit the most people, whether it be the most people in the school, whether it be the most community members whether it be the most people in my family just whatever i feel fits the most trying to find that a uh, happy greater medium. good yeah uh line yeah right yeah it, it seems like this year has really underscored the connection between the schools and the community i mean all the important roles that the schools uh fill in people's lives yeah. and kids lives and then also how the community can impact the school district mm -hmm. and does it feel to you like there's a good intersection there? Like that that communication between the two is good enough? It can definitely improve. I think there's adequate connection. I think it needs to be a little bit better, better stronger. Are you ready to reply to a lot of emails? <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm not going to be the... <laughs> I know there's several that won't agree with me at all, so I, I'm going to have to be able mm -hmm. to put a level head on, but yes, I think I can. And how thick is your skin? <laughs> <sighs> uh, Which in the past, it, it, I don't know if that would have been really a question for right? a school it's board member. It's not been a controversial. Well, I mean, okay, there are always people who take issue with decisions at the schools. There, There's a, a long and storied history, right, of people who, you know, feel like something needs to be done differently or better. There needs to, I've, I've always heard, needs to be better communication. I mean, that's just a, a theme mm -hmm. uh, because, it, because we've seen how big an impact the schools do have on our lives. But 
it seems like this last year, of course, the school board's really been kind of a lightning rod and has been taking quite a bit of, um, you know, uh, personal abuse, to be honest. Mute your phone, Michelle. <laughs> I thought I did. See, this is the best part. We can edit this out <laughs> or leave it in and just embarrass her. I'm cool with that, too. Actually, one time at a city council meeting, there were a bunch of people uh, fighting. They were arguing about a bunch of stuff. Uh, it was a very contentious issue. And this guy came up and he was one of the guys who was just going to read him the riot act, as he did just about every week. <laughs> and I forgot <laughs> to silence my phone. And when I and then all of a sudden my phone went off as he walked up and adjusted his mic. And it was the theme music for the good, the bad and the ugly was my <laughs> ringtone at the time. And everybody in the entire room just stopped and laughed because it just seemed like the perfect music at the perfect time. And then, of course, and I'm diving for my phone, frantically trying to silence it. It was humiliating, but it was hilarious. That's awesome. <laughs> That's a great story. Yeah. Anyway. So, uh, yeah. So these, um, I actually forgot what I was going to ask you now. I got all sidetracked. Thick skin. I thick believe. skin. Thank you. Let's go back to the thick skin. So, yeah. I mean, are you prepared for that? Because it's been challenging for some of the members. I honestly don't know, to be honest, because I, I kind of am an empath. So I might have a rough time on that front. But I also am pretty good at just letting things roll off until it just gets to be too much. So half a dozen of one, six of the other. <laughs> yeah, I can see, yeah. you know, you've, you've got somebody that, you know, contacts you and is, disagrees on maybe a, a vote you, you yeah. made. Right. And then you, you want to like, okay, listen to them. Right. And right. try to take it in and then hopefully respond in some way. Maybe that's satisfactory or not yeah. to them. And then I'm sure it's the they keep coming at you. Then that's where it's I, I don't. Yeah. There's there's part of me that with dealing with this whole change and a lot more communication having to come from especially teachers, the parents via email. Um, like I've we've got a kid that goes to Westwood. We've got a kid that goes to Richmond. Um, and the communication styles between those two schools are night and day. Yeah. I'm not saying one is better than the other. Yeah. They're it's just they're totally just different. different. And I, I feel like all these uh, teachers now that are having to email more, I'm guessing they, they do not enjoy it. Um, but I just want to take like a OSU like PR student or somebody and be like, okay, they do your emails now. You tell them what needs to be in there and they will write it for you and they will make it concise, bullet points, links, all these things. And like they need additional resources, I think. I th Yeah, I can um, see that. Because I don't, I don't think we can go back to before where we were hardly communicating at all. No, no. Well, and one of the things that's come up from some of the other candidates is how... Some of this stuff that we've had to do to adapt to the pandemic may turn out to be lasting changes because it turns out that there are maybe some benefits to some of it. Yeah. Everything wasn't necessarily a negative. We've had to, you know, develop some new strategies that may be helpful for different people. Uh, what do you see in the, you know, coming from this that might be helpful or that you would like to see continue? I like being able to text my son's teachers. So I definitely think that maybe would be something to keep. I know maybe that might not be feasible for all the teachers and everyone, but that's something I would really like to keep. Just even if not text, call. Personally call them. Um, that way, if you're doing homework at six o'clock at night, hey, just quick text. My son's having issues with algebra. What are your suggestions? or whatever but not everyone will get an email at six o'clock at night if it's on their school email it'll go to their school box which might be locked in their classroom i'd also like to see better internet availability because not everyone has that ability to pay for that mm -hmm. like 
my family does not. We only recently just got it because we finally got a better income coming in. And we were using the school's hotspot and that was spotty at best. Really? Like. We could only use it in like three of the rooms in our house because our house was set up, is set up kind of strange. Kind of strange, but like for some reason, our son's room, it was like a dead zone for the hotspot, even if it was right on top of the Chromebook. So okay. that, but that was probably like a leak from a, the cell phone tower that That it's could have been to? some sort of technical issue, not necessarily the device itself, but. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And it, it depends on like your house. You might have. Uh, some some metal or a refrigerator or something that yeah. just bounces that cell phone signal around and you don't get it. Yeah. Well, and that's something that really hasn't been discussed that much because it's been kind of presented as, you know, we got these hot spots and this is filling those gaps. This is providing at least a basic level of service for people who need it. But I haven't heard anyone before say that even with the hot spot, we had problems. Yeah. So... That's a really good point. I don't know with yeah. with with your child, but with ours, I mean, there's the teachers send a lot of videos to watch too. Yeah, and I I remember um, there was we a were lot having of lag some internet load. issues. Yeah, and if the the video doesn't load or it's really slow, and you're like having to try to scrub back to like what did they say, and then you're like I just want to go back thirty seconds, and then it's like buffering for two minutes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, that no. sounds really really frustrating. Yeah. It, yeah. it kind of really was. Yeah. So what has it been like having your, I mean, so were you enrolled in in-person traditional? Yes. Okay. So what, it, and your little boy is in what grade? Third. Third now. Okay. So what was that like having him do the distance learning this year? It made me realize I never really wanted to be a teacher. <laughs> 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 I think a lot of people, it really solidified that for them. Well, in elementary school, that was my first job I wanted was a teacher. I wanted to be a teacher. But being his home teacher, I was like, no, I can't do this. I don't have the patience. And it's my own kid. Mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine the stress that a teacher has with 24 kids goes under. And so I applaud them. <laughs> like, y'all are heroes. Mm -hmm. I just... It's been tough because I've been also having to keep my toddler out of his hair so that he could do his schoolwork. Mm -hmm. And she w just wants to play with her brother. She doesn't understand why he's not able to play. Oh, yeah. Because he's home. That must, yeah. That's, that's a, exactly. It's like summer vacation all year round. Exactly. <laughs> right. So what do you wish that people would understand about what it's been like for parents who had their kids home and who... Where they would normally send them to school. Oh. That it's not just all rainbows and everything that we get to spend all day with our kid. It Some of us need that time so that we can clean the house or we can get dinner started or go grocery shopping. It's a lot harder to go grocery shopping when you have all your kids... Mm -hmm. And no one else to watch them because you're either working at home or you're a stay at home parent who's helping with school. Mm -hmm. uh, not all of us can afford to send our kids to daycare. So just I just wish more people were understanding of everyone's choices. And yeah, it's been a struggle for people it has, for, yeah. for sure. I know uh, it really has. I, I know it has been pretty stressful for me <laughs> and from other parents that I've spoke with. Well, and, and for so many parents, it seems like instead of, um, you know, you think of, okay, your kid goes to school, say from 8.30 to 2.30 or 3, and then they're kind of done for the day, maybe have a little bit of homework or something like that. But when you have them at home, it seems like it, it maybe isn't quite as compressed, but it stretches out and takes parts of your whole day it's almost like it's never over for yeah. some people it it really isn't it there have been days where i'd feed my son and daughter breakfast and at say i'd let them watch tv before eat their breakfast at say 10 o'clock because stay at home we just took a slow day we didn't i was at different times so at like 10 o'clock i'd say okay tony let's go start your school and 
we'd be fighting all day, all day past dinner to get school done sometimes. Mm -hmm. It might be not necessarily the norm because my son is autistic, but that could be part of our struggles. It could just be coincidence. So, but yeah. If you look at the number of kids in Stillwater Public Schools who are on IEPs, though, it's a really high percentage. I don't have the number right in my head at the moment, but I know it's a good chunk of the kids yeah. have some kind of accommodation. I, I was on an IEP for the longest time also, so it wouldn't surprise me. Right. And and that complicates things, too, because, I mean, yeah. an, an IEP, for anyone who isn't familiar with that, is an individualized education plan yeah. where basically a kid just needs some kind of accommodation or some type of extra help of some sort yeah. in order to to be able to do the curriculum or do the schoolwork. And can you imagine trying to deliver that remotely? Yeah. Which I mean, is why I give the teachers so many props. They work so hard and have been so understanding, at least in my experience, maybe not at other right. schools, but in my experience, they've been so amazing, especially with all the hurdles they've had to deal with this year. Sure. So, so what pushed you to throw your hat in the ring for school board? What finally pushed you over the edge? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just... It's really hard to say. I think the really big thing is I had been thinking about it when they announced the days that you could go. I'm like, should I? Should I not? And then the on the last day that was open for signing up for it, I woke up with knots in my stomach and I'm like, this is the right choice. When I just felt that, that almost sick, but you just that stress, nervous kind of knots in your stomach. I was like, and that's kind of how I decide a lot of things sometimes is, is that the right choice? Is it making me kind of tense? If it's making me kind of tense, maybe it is the right path. So how uh, does your like family and friends and stuff play into those types of choices? I mean, do they, I'm sure you're not like keeping it all to yourself. You're talking to family oh, yeah, and yeah. stuff. I'm like, I think They've I'm going to do this. actually all been pretty supportive. I was, I kept it kind of on the down low mm-hmm. to begin with, just because I didn't need the negativity, don't do it kind of thing. Because mm-hmm. I, I just felt that there would be a lot of that from my friends and family and fact i was actually kind of nervous telling my parents yeah <laughs> hey so i'm doing this um what are your thoughts and they're like okay cool why <laughs> go for it <laughs> but yeah overall they've been pretty supportive so good yeah you, you think you got their vote i I hope so, but I'm not going to say, hey, go vote for me. If if you don't vote for me, I'm not coming to see you anymore. I'm not going to do that. You can't see the grandkids. Yeah, Yeah. the holidays are going to be so awkward. Right? I'm not going to ask them, hey, did you vote for me? (laughs) No. So, I mean, if you get on the school board, what are you hoping to accomplish? What do you really want to see happen? Um, Outside of COVID, I would like to see a better focus on stem and the arts because it's getting better but with all the budget cuts at the state level it's been cut back so much from even when I was in high school that it's actually kind of heartbreaking Mm -hmm. like that's where I had most of my fun was in those type of classes in those environments and with the budgets cutting back it's harder to get into that kind of thing I'd like to see that kind of thing at lower grade levels, too. Um, With COVID, I just want everyone to be safe. I want there to be proper PPE for everyone that needs it. I want the teachers and the staff, not just the teachers, to have the vaccines if they so choose. I just, I want to make sure that we go back to school safely. And I'm probably one that thinks that we're going back too soon to be perfectly honest yeah because that's next week yeah and that does make me nervous but i 
I can't be full time stay at home, watch my kid do his schoolwork on ingenuity for the rest of the year. So I'm yeah. keeping him with his in person. It's it's interesting to me that you you know are expressing concerns about going back to school too early, but at the same time, it's been tough having your kids at home. And I think a lot of times, uh, you know, there's this idea that people who are struggling with the with the homeschooling aspect of it, you know, they just want the kids back in school. They don't care. They just want, you know, and there's some people who, you know, have just said, you know, this is better for the kids. Get them back in school. They're not likely to get sick. You know, they just think they should have been in the whole time. Yeah. So it's interesting that like both things are hard for you. Yes. Yes. Um, I just, I really do think it's too soon. I used to work at the middle school, like right out of high school, worked at the middle school here and Lord, do I know that kids are gross. <laughs> I was a janitor, and I will leave it at that. It was gross. That said, younger kids are grosser, typically. And I just, I know the kids don't necessarily follow boundaries or follow all the rules. So I think that we've been following the color-coded map for the past seven months. We've been doing the distance learning for this past seven months. We've been going to... Five, two and five day in person school as the numbers allow why not finish out the school year it's two more months why can't we just finish it the way we've been doing it so that that's been my biggest issue with this is we're changing it up again in the last nine weeks why gotcha so and I know my son does better when he's in person because he'll have that one-on-one. -on -one. He can go see his IEP teachers. He can ask his teachers directly for help. He he has all that in person. But I, I still don't think it's quite soon. Or we, we really shouldn't go this soon. But okay, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it's if, well, it. Re it really underscores for me how tough some of these decisions are. So, but by time you would possibly be on the board, we're going to be less than like a month or so out from the regular end of school. So you may not be able to like yeah. influence things, but then I, I know there's got to be other co topics of conversation of like, do we need to somehow have school during the summer? Like, how do we catch all these kids up? Yeah. I actually know for a fact that my son's school, Highland Park, is doing a summer school option. Oh. I don't know if the other five elementary schools are doing that. I have not heard anything. I oh, just, yeah. it was mentioned during our parent-teacher conference, I think, two weeks ago. So, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. There's been discussion at the district level about have, offering summer school as a, as a way to help kids who have fallen a little bit behind get caught up mm -hmm. before be the beginning of the next year. Because, you know, there's been that concern about kids falling behind and then this just kind of rolling forward, right? And yeah. then struggling the rest of the way through well, if they miss some of those foundational things. Yeah, and I would think, I mean, at some point before the summer we'll have results of state testing. Which, you know, everyone's super excited about that, oh, right? right? <laughs> yeah, I... Our teachers yeah. told us, made us feel like it. that we have to do it to get a measurement, which I understand, but that it's not necessarily going to be factored into, does your kid, like, progress to the next grade? That's almost kind of what I understood from our student, our parent-teacher conference also, because... Yeah. That's been my biggest concern. I actually debated holding my son back before he started this year because mm -hmm. of how COVID ended yeah. his second grade. Because I knew and I got reassurance that he has special uh, things set up so he won't necessarily be held back. Yeah. But I just, I knew that with the state testing in third grade, if you fall below a certain level, you're held back regardless yeah but COVID has kind of I guess lifted a little bit of that restriction from my understanding but I don't know I would, for sure I would hope so you I, can't I, test I, to the same like exactly uh if you haven't had the the same uh possibility for the same type of instruction right that the state tests yeah. are you know assume 
Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, uh, some of these are federal requirements. Yeah. And so they're doing it just to meet those federal requirements. Yeah. But I think it's it's pretty much been accepted that almost across the country <laughs> yeah. that, you know, this has been an unusual year and that we're just this is going to be a blip on yeah. that timeline. Right. We're not going these these are not going to be your usual types of measurements. This has been an unusual period. Yeah. I mean, I think they might actually be helpful in determining exactly how much the pandemic and the things we've had to do to get through it have set kids back or so that maybe got how well they actually did or maybe how how little it set them back and how yeah. well they actually did because every kid's different and some are actually probably thriving yeah under the new setup mm -hmm. whereas others are really really yeah. struggling no, so, for sure. I th it, it'll be interesting to see what the results are. But I don't think they're going to be held against anyone as much as they would have normally been. Yeah, yeah. That, that's my understanding as yeah. well. Yeah, I told the kids, I was like, you're going to be an asterisk kid. <laughs> There's going to be a little asterisk next to uh, your, your graduation. Uh, and hopefully it reads like, uh, you survive distance learning or <laughs> right? or virtual learning or being at home with your parents, <laughs> whatever that you is. You survived 2020. Congratulations. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so then when colleges or whatever are looking at that, I mean, they're like, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you would hope so, especially for the kids that are like in high school where they're having to try to. I mean, this is well, they're, tough they're because you're going to go to college. Yeah, yeah, you're trying to get into colleges. You're trying to get scholarships and things like that. Luckily, so many people are kind of in the same boat. So, I mean, yeah. ho hopefully it's all kind of leveled out, you know, across the country. Yeah. yeah. But, okay, so we've talked about a lot of stuff. Yes. Uh, what what would you want people to know? What's, what's some something we haven't asked you about that you would want people to know about you? Okay, I've I've got a I've got an easier question. <laughs> okay, he's got. Okay, you have a minute to think. Okay. You can ask. You can answer Chris's question first. Okay. Um. So, uh, we talked about like, uh, you and your family like mm -hmm. doing camping. Um, and then now that we're friends on Facebook, yes. I've noticed uh, she's also in the local Pokemon Go yes, group. Yes, I am. Oh. So is that something that you also do? Uh, the three-year-old obviously is probably uh, She not... actually really likes Pikachu. So okay. <laughs> yeah. My son has his own account that I kind of just watch over. And mm -hmm. he that way he doesn't mess up my account. But So how long have you been playing? I've been playing since the very beginning. I took a very like maybe a six month hiatus because my phone at the time was very finicky and I wasn't able to play for more than like 30 minutes at a time without reloading. Yeah. But otherwise, yeah. Even on a newer phone, the game is still pretty glitchy, but not quite as bad as that phone. I stopped playing for years and we picked it up again during the pandemic. <laughs> and, uh, my partner, uh, I was like, hey, you know, we should, we should play, you know, we wanted to, it was a weird thing of we're stuck inside, but we got outside. Yeah. Like, you know, outside is free. Outside is safe. Yeah. And um, and so I was like, let's let's go back and try this Pokemon thing. Because my son, he's in third grade. Okay. And uh, he's super into it. Of course, now that we got all into it, he's not as into it now. <laughs> you know. Well, but, it's not as cool now. Yeah, right? it's not as cool now. <laughs> yeah. And I guess your old man is now like, hey, uh, so what do you think of that? Uh, Charmander. Yeah, a Charmander. Or, uh, <laughs> it's hey. the only one I know, that one in Pikachu. <laughs> and he would, you know, then he'll go tell me like what region they're from and all this stuff. And I still don't know any of that stuff. <laughs> um, uh, but it's been fun because then that like got us out, got us yeah. walking around and stuff. And then so now my my partner's, uh, she's uh, she's not in the Facebook group, but uh, she's actually like ahead of me. She's like a level head. Oh, no. Ooh. Well, it's because she had the advantage. She works at OSU. Ah. And there's a Pokestop right by her. And we, we bought one of those little automated things. Little so, button things, yes. yeah. So you could just sit there and, you know, every five minutes it's doing it, doing all the work for you. It's amazing. Kind of jealous of that. I know. But I need a Pokemon stop by my house. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, when this... Closest uh, one to me is half a mile, so... <laughs> when the game first blew up, we actually set up a Poke stop at Block 34. The news press set one up for a while. And we had we had a little event over there to get people to show up. Yeah. I remember the, the first one was we went to, obviously, campus. The uh, 
Centennial Garden by the Student Union. Yeah. We're like, oh, it shows there's some pokey stops there. Go there. And there was like 50 other people all there. Like the, it was that first like weekend or whatever yeah. that it was open. And I was like, I th- everybody here is playing this game. And it was everybody there was playing the same game. That, that I just miss seeing that so much. Yeah, like I still get a smile when I see someone walking down the sidewalk downtown, and they're have mm-hmm. their game going. I'm like, yay! Yeah, downtown's a perfect place because you can just like walk on the sidewalk, walk around, make like a loop, uh, yeah. walk yourself like a mile. Because part of the game too is you gotta you gotta walk right. yeah. to earn. Uh, different aspects okay. of, yeah. of the game. So it really encourages. And of course, they, they changed it for the pandemic. Before, it really you didn't do much if you're just sitting inside your house. Exactly. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I, I love playing that game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I what, was actually playing before I was heading on my way here. So, yeah. I've, I've got a uh, um, an EV that I've got a walk 10 kilometers that's the other difference is it's all in <laughs> oh it's all in right. metrics and, yeah, and right. so it's like okay my block okay i can walk around the block that's about one kilometer it's it's been really interesting see i yeah. can't even think in kilometers they've been threatening me with really the metric either, system so. since i was a child yeah <laughs> luckily it measures everything for us so it's just yeah like, go luckily out there. we don't have to do the math <laughs> yeah yeah um but it's pretty fun so very cool uh, yeah yeah very cool Okay, so back to my hard question. Yes. Oh, no, it it doesn't have to be that hard. Just, I mean, you know, it's just a last chance to tell people a little bit about yourself. Anything that we haven't thought to ask or anything you want to emphasize? I just, I'm a pretty easygoing person. If we get along, great. If we don't, okay, you do you. I'm not going to make anyone be my friend or any of that. Just... I don't like bullying. I don't like rude. I don't like any of that. Just let's just be cool. Treat everyone equally. Um, and I hope everyone actually votes for who they feel fits their beliefs. Whether we agree on everything or not, that doesn't matter. Just who do you think will help uphold your beliefs the most? Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Carly. I really appreciate you coming in. It was nice getting to know you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thanks again to Carly Santelli for joining us. Up next, Michelle and I sit down with city council candidates Christy Hawkins and Ariel Ross. We have an in-depth conversation about the various issues facing Stillwater. Learn how they would spend a $1 million gift on the community and hear their thoughts on everyone's favorite topic, zoning. We hope you join us for these critical conversations. Thanks to the Stillwater News Press for their support in this endeavor. I truly believe this is just the beginning of a local content revival in our community. If you find value in these conversations, please consider becoming a Studio Stillwater community member on Patreon. We have a lot of ideas for our next series of podcasts that we would love to get your feedback on. Go to patreon.com forward slash Studio Stillwater to join. You can get in touch with us via email, studiostillwaterok at gmail.com, or DM us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We love to hear from our listeners. Finally, check out the show notes. There you will find links to items we discussed on the show. Thanks again for joining us. Until next time.